All right, let's come back to some New York politics and maybe some big trouble for a big time power broker in New York, perhaps another black eye for the Assembly Speaker, Shelley Silver. Andrew, any reason to think uh, this time it'll stick? There's more concern in the Shelley Silver camp tonight, Rich. The power broker we're referring to is William Rapfogel, executive director of the Metropolitan Council on Jewish Poverty. He's under investigation and fired yesterday, accused of using council funds to overpay insurance companies, who then gave cash to Democratic mayoral candidates and perhaps some to Rapfogel. The candidates have returned the money. The council gets millions in taxpayer money, some coming from Shelley Silver, and their connection goes a lot deeper than just politics. Rap Fogel's wife, Judy, is Silver's longtime chief of staff, and there are rumors linking her to Silver in other ways by none other than one of the former aides accusing Vito Lopez of wrongdoing. That accuser claimed Lopez wanted their relationship to be like that of Silver and Rap Fogel. I'm not going to draw all the lines on that diagram, Rich, but you get the idea. Listen, uh, we've seen um, Shelley Silver come under heat, but yet nobody really challenges him. There's been one challenge didn't really go anywhere. At the end of the day, if he survived Vito Lopez, is there any reason to think that this thing's going to bring him down? I think it's death by a thousand cuts. I mean, you have uh, your chief of staff's husband now brought down. He basically apologized, which says he's admitting wrongdoing. He's brought down. He's been flush in state money. Silver got hit the other day. He takes, he takes the the indirect route from New York City to Washington, D.C. to Albany to get the frequent flyer miles doubles the cost of the trip. I mean, every day there's something out about silver. So I, th I don't think it's any one thing. There's no silver bullet, but keep pushing, keep pushing. And one, one big uh, uh, tipping point is a Democrat candidate for the Assembly, uh, Mr. Rivera in the, in the Bronx, uh, came out against silver. So here is something that's rarely never happened. Incumbent Democrats, especially challenger Democrats, who need the silver money, never It has been never political come out. suicide trying to do a coup against Shelley Silver. Right. Over. Um, and, you know, I think he's as talented a politician, forgetting about this, as anybody in terms of not only counting votes here, but also passing out the, the Lulus and whatever else. You got to be, you got to really know how to count here if you're going to take them on. Right now, you don't see that. Do you guys? No. No. And he's not in trouble. This is much ado about nothing. Uh, full disclosure to rap, flow, rap Fogels, I've known both of them and for a very long time. And the Metropolitan Council does a lot of good work for a lot of people. I don't know what's going on as far as these allegations of, of, of missing funds or misappropriated funds. The Speaker has given member items for years to the Metropolitan Council, which in turn uh, spends the money, Richard, on housing. I've seen many of the buildings that they own. Which in many ways makes this even worse because I always find that whenever there's a scandal, you always find at the root that the people are going to get hurt are the people who need it most here, and these are the people potentially taking advantage. All right, I'm, you're going to want to let me get to this next one, okay? The governor's plan to create tax-free business zones on campuses of SUNY schools. Well, there's a hitch in that plan. It came up this week. It's a report from the state budget office saying the plan will cost more than 320 million bucks over the next three years. The plan designed to spark business growth across the state. Tell everybody at home why they ought to care or something. Yeah, well, we were told that this upstate jobs plan to give tax-free status for 10 years on SUNY campuses or near other college campuses would be the boom to the upstate economy. I represent the Hudson Valley. We were told it wasn't going to cost anything. It was a freebie and we were going to get 10,000 jobs. What we found out about a month after the bill sailed through the Senate and failed, sailed through the Assembly, I voted against it, but it did go through pretty easily, the price tag went from zero dollars to three hundred million dollars, a hundred million over the next three years. That is a big difference. I, I've uh, drafted a repeal bill to say this is not what was voted on. We were voting on something that wasn't going to cost anything. But isn't some of that money from the receipts that the government would be getting from these businesses that are now tax-free? I mean, it's not necessarily three hundred dollars out of pocket. It's the money that would have come in if they had been taxed. No, at least some of it, correct? By admitting they're going to lose tax revenue, they said budget neutral. That's a quote from the governor. By, by saying that we're going to lose tax revenue, what they're saying is those jobs are already here paying taxes. Once we move them to the SUNY campus and they don't pay taxes, we're going to lose that tax revenue. That's very different than bringing in jobs from overseas, bringing in jobs from other, other states. The other thing with Startup New York is that is the big economic bill for this whole session. It's capped at 10,000 jobs. 10,000 jobs is one-tenth of one percent of the private sector jobs. So the bold maneuver by the governor vis-a-vis -vis jobs will at best, if it works perfectly, add one-tenth of one percent to the private sector jobs you know, in the state. I've been, I've been covering um, not just your district, but points north for a long time. And I did a 180 on casinos, for example, because if you've been up uh, to the Catskills and certain places around there, they need something. And tax-free zones, not perfect, but what else do they have to lose? What's the alternative? How do you bring business back? Um, I'm not saying this is perfect, so don't please get me to defend it, but 
what is, if this isn't it, what, what will get people to relocate businesses there and make the argument that they can keep employees there and keep the young people from leaving as soon as they turn 18? Well, number one, the regulators in this state are brutal. If you have a problem with a state agency, you go into uh, phone mail hell. If you get somebody, they're very unhelpful. Uh, you're not in your head. You're trying, you're trying to run a business. You have a work business comp problem. State. That's why we've been yeah. losing business. I'm going let you finish, but good. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's regulatory burden is unbelievable in the state. The tax burden is unbelievable. If there's three hundred million dollars that we can take away from the budget uh, for specific handpicked companies, handpicked by Albany, which is central planning, it's crony capitalism. Why don't we take that three hundred million and just lower taxes I'm across sorry, the board. We're losing business and we're losing people. Republicans too. against taxes and regulation. I'm just writing that down because <laughs> I haven't heard that. Well, we've, we've been trying the high tax, high regulation. We have uh, the second most layoffs, 35,000 layoffs in the last six months. Cuomo's startup in New York is going to create 10,000 jobs. But it's ta it's tax free though. I would think a Republican would love a tax free zone. Not it's if they're free. Not, not, not if it's costing $300 million. Yeah. Dollars and not if it's hand picked. Budget. If you've got to be hand picked, there's a, there's a, you know, three men in a room? We'll start up New York, let the three men in a room pick three people, and they pick, you're the chosen one, you get to be tax-free. That's picking Finally. winners and losers. Finally, I'm I don't the think chosen one. When we come back, uh, we will remember um, a, a person whose name may not trip off the tongue, um, but if you know New York politics, he was a giant, especially in city politics for a long time. We'll remember Bill Lynch after this.